Hi everybody, welcome back to The Bindery. Thanks for joining me today for part three of our series on replicating the notebook from the film The Notebook. If you missed the previous two videos, you can check the description below for links to those. In the previous videos, we finished sewing and trimming the text block for our journal. We made the case and covered it in cloth. And so today we're going to be working on making the tooled lines on the perimeter of the front and back covers. We're going to pair the leather for the tips and apply those and hopefully finish the book. The two main features we want to focus on today are going to be these tooled lines and the leather tips. And again, my scale printout of the movie prop is going to prove invaluable here because I'll be able to use it to measure the tooled lines and lay them out on our replica. I don't have any sort of machine that's going to allow me to make these lines, so I'll be doing it all by freehand. So to make my life easier, I'm going to make a template of these lines based on the scale drawing, and I'll follow that as I apply them to the covers of the book. So there's the finished template. To make my life a little bit simpler, I decided to standardize the measurements. I went for a uniform six millimeters along the head, tail, and fore edge, five millimeters for the 45 degree angle along the tips, and just three millimeters along the spine. Now I'm gonna cut out the center portion of the template. And that way I'll be able to apply it to the face of the book and then lift it away and work around the edges. So now I can take the outline of the template and align it to the cover of the book. Then I'll place the center portion in. Once that's all aligned, I'll put a weight on the center portion, lift away the outer part, and then I can work my way around the perimeter to tool the lines. This is actually a steel plate. It keeps the center template piece from shifting. To actually make the tooled lines on the cloth, I'm going to use this tool, which is an ebony folder. It's hard enough to make a good line and has a very fine working edge, yet it's not so hard that it's going to tear and damage the cloth, which I definitely don't want to do. I'm just going to slide my weight to one side so that I can get my ruler just along the edge of my template. And then using the corner of my folder, I'm going to start with a fair bit of pressure working a line into the fabric. So you can see that it's made a very distinct impression in the cloth. So in that fashion, I'll just work my way around the perimeter of the cover. For the next line in, I'm going to measure in one and a half millimeters from the line I already made. And then I'll tool in the second line. For the third inner line, I'm going to measure in two and a half millimeters. So 
So that's one side done. Now I'll repeat the process on the other side. With the tooling done, I now want to move on to darkening these lines. For that, I'm going to be using this archival ink marker. It's permanent. It's a very fine point, so I can control it and get right into the lines. I did try doing this with a ruler, but I found it obscured my view. So I'm just going slowly and carefully freehand and allowing the tip of the marker to follow the embossed lines. I found going over each line twice, once in each direction, helps to fully darken the line. With the tooling done on the book, it's now time to turn my attention to making the leather corners. For those, I'm going to be using genuine leather. This is about a two ounce calfskin. I think the colors are a really good match for the book from the film, but as it is, the thickness is a little bit too much to apply it directly to the book. So to pare that down to a thickness where I can work with it, I'm going to use my paring knife and I'll be working on my paring stone. Once again, I'm going to turn to my paper template in order to get the correct dimensions for the leather corners. I want to add at least 20 millimeters for the turn ends. I'll trim the pieces on a diagonal to wrap around to the back. I'll trim those at a 90 degree angle where they turn in around to the back cover. And to allow for the pleats around the radius, I'm just going to round this off roughly. And I'll likely trim that down even more when it comes to actually turning it in. So using those dimensions, I'll make a template for cutting out the corner pieces. Now using my template, I'm going to mark out all of my pieces on the leather. Though I only need four pieces for the book, I'm going to make at least six just so I can choose amongst the best of them. And if I happen to slip with the knife, then I'll have a few extras. And I'll try to get as many pieces from it as, as I can. So my goal here is to reduce the thickness of each of the leather pieces and tapering the edges down to paper thinness. To do that I'm using my paring knife, left-handed obviously. Then it's a matter of just carefully working my way along each piece and tapering out the edges. I also want to reduce the thickness of the leather in the center of the piece. That gives you the general idea. Now I'll continue to work and you get to watch a time lapse.
So I continued working on these off camera. I did have the blade slip on one, so that one won't be usable, but luckily I have extras. I've got five that I think will be usable. So I'll choose the four best and we'll move on to applying them to the book. So I've got my four leather tips and I took the other two and took the opportunity to make some test corners. In doing so, in forming the pleats, I realized I needed to modify the shape that I'd cut out for the tips. So I'm gonna trim them down from this rounded edge shape to this. This reduces the amount of leather that will get bunched up when I pleat the corner. In order to make a nice pleat that's not too bulky, I need to trim the leather in this area extraordinarily thin. In preparation of applying the tips, I'm first going to mask off the corners of the cover using this low-tack painter's masking tape. The reason for this is twofold. First, it'll help me align the tips as I apply them, and second, it'll prevent any excess glue from bleeding out onto the book cloth. Glue on book cloth is absolutely the worst. I've yet to find a satisfactory way of removing it. And if it bleeds out, I'm basically going to have to scrap this cover and start over. So I definitely want to prevent that. Just using a piece of scrap card, I'll position it over the corner where the leather will be. Then I'll carefully place my masking tape right up to that edge. What's left will be covered with leather. The first step in applying the tips is to just moisten them a bit with some water. It's important that the leather be damp when we try to pleat the corners so that it's more flexible. I don't want the leather soaking wet, just damp. The next step is to apply some wheat paste to the inside of the tips. I made this paste myself, it's a really simple formula. 250 milliliters of distilled water, between 15 and 20 grams of strong flour and you combine those and cook them gently in a double boiler for 15 or 20 minutes. After it's cooled completely, you strain it and then it's ready to use. I'll place those together paste side to paste side and let them rest for a few minutes. Once those have absorbed some of the paste, I'll scrape off any excess and then apply some more. Now it's time to apply the tips. And I'm going to double down on my adhesive and I'm also going to use some PVA. The PVA will ensure a good, strong, quick bond to the fabric, while the paste will help to impart a firmness to the leather after it's dried. First I'll align it to the edge of the masked off area. And just press that down gently. I'll turn in the edges. And now using the tip of my bone folder, I'll begin folding in the pleat. Just taking my time.
Once I'm happy with how that pleat has come together, I'm actually going to hammer it down to flatten it. I'll just repeat the process on the other three corners. Lastly, I'll just peel off this masking tape carefully, making sure not to disturb the leather that I've just so carefully applied. I'll check over all those corners and turn-ins just to make sure that they're all looking good. And the whole cover is going to go into the press between some boards. I'm just going to give it some light pressure and I'll leave it there until the leather and glue has dried. In preparation for casing in the book, I just want to tidy up the mull and the tapes. I'm just going to bevel the corners of the mull. This is really just for aesthetic purposes. And I'll trim the tapes back to the edge of the mull. This is also a good opportunity to trim the length of the bookmark. I'll cut that so that it's about halfway back up the length of the book. And then to prevent the bookmark from fraying out, I'm just going to flame the end with a lighter. I'm just going to mark the end papers as front and back. And as a last step before casing in, I just want to trim about a millimeter off the edge of the paste down. When I apply the glue, it's going to cause the paper to swell and expand a little bit towards the fore edge. So trimming a millimeter off now will help everything line up in the finished book. Now with the cover and the text block complete, the time's finally come to combine the two and finish the book. I've got everything ready. I've got my cover and text block. I also have my waste paper, blotting paper, and moisture barrier paper. So the first thing I need to do is to place the text block into the cover and line up the squares on all three sides, head, tail, and fore edge, to make sure that everything's even. And I'll close the cover. And I'll just check that on the other side. There won't be much opportunity for fine adjustments once the glue is come in contact with the covers. Now I'll take a piece of waste paper and place it underneath the paste down. The glue I'm using once again is a 50-50 mix of PVA and methyl cellulose. I begin just by gluing down the tapes. And then I'll lay down the mull. Then I'll paste out the rest of the cover, applying glue to the mull, and then brushing out towards the edges of the paper. And 
I'll carefully remove the waste paper. And I'll recheck that nothing has moved, that our squares are all still good. Then holding the paste down and pulling gently, pressing down on the book so that it doesn't shift, I'll close the cover. Now I'll quickly repeat the process on the other side. Then I'll place my blotting paper in first and then my moisture barrier paper against the paste down. Then it's back in the press under strong pressure for at least eight hours, or even better, 24. So that's it for the Notebook Replica series. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. If there are other books from film or television that you think would make a good project, let me know down in the comments and I'll see what I can do. And make sure that you subscribe and activate your notifications so you'll see what I get up to next time. And for those of you who have stuck it out to the very end, I have one last surprise for you. A little bit of Hollywood magic. I didn't make just one replica notebook. I actually made two. So thanks again, until next time, happy binding.